Get ready to hear the best evidence they've got and how to refute it. There's actually been studies and stuff that have been shown where if you look on a smaller scale, such as bacteria, because they have generations pass so much faster than us, because they are constantly replicating and reproducing, they actually have significant changes that we can see. So do I. You go back 40 years, 50 years, I didn't look like this. Right. It's a significant change. So the bacteria, did it become something else? Did it evolve into an animal or something? Or did it remain bacteria? It's going to take more time than you or I will have on this earth. To How long? Uh, it can be, you know, hundreds of thousands to millions, tens of millions of years. So who's observed that? Um, well, there's evidence in fossil records and also... Oh, so it's not tested or observed, which is the scientific method. Well, that's why it would be considered a theory, right? Yeah, it's just a theory. There's nothing to back it up. Don't be fooled into believing that Darwinian evolution has any scientific evidence to back it up. If you do believe that, you need to watch Evolution vs. God. I went to four evolutionary scientists at UCLA and USC and pressed them for any evidence to back up Darwinian evolution and not one of them could produce evidence. It's really hated by evolutionist believers. Someone in the know at YouTube didn't like it so much that they went through and blurred some of the images. But watch it anyway, Evolution vs. God on our YouTube channel. Do you respect Jesus? Um, yeah, sure. I respect what he taught as a philosophy for the most part. Disagree with certain parts of it. What do you disagree with? Such as, like, standpoints on, like, homosexuality would be a big one. Did Jesus talk about homosexuality? Um, you know, I don't know necessarily if there's directly, like, things with Jesus talking about homosexuality, but... No, he didn't. Okay. But the Bible does. It says this, Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor thieves, nor homosexuals, mm -hmm. nor idolaters will inherit the kingdom of God. So if I love an adulterer, or a thief, or a fornicator, I've got to tell him he's not going to inherit God's kingdom. And just because someone's a homosexual, I'm not going to disqualify him from hearing that he can be saved from death and hell. Mm -hmm. Now, back to what Jesus said about evolution. He discounted it with one sentence. Did mm -hmm. you know that? No, I wasn't aware of him yeah, directly he, referencing evolution. He said this, he said, in the beginning, God made them male and female. Mm -hmm. He didn't make them as one primate that sort of evolved into a male and female and then reproduced after their own kind. Mm -hmm. He said, no, God made man in his own image with the ability to reproduce. Here's a good question, and by the way, feel free to leave any questions you may have in the comments section. Joshua asked, he said, I wanted to reach out, but there is a wide criticism about Ray Comfort, which is that his method does not work on everyone and that he's not discipling the people afterwards. I can't ask girls for their phone number, their email address, people I've just met, but I do give them literature about discipleship, so I do believe in that. It's a little booklet called Save Yourself Some Pain and it talks about being disciplined as a Christian. And by the way, I can't take credit for this method. I learned it from Jesus, Mark 10, verse 17, the rich young ruler came running to Jesus and said, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus reproved his understanding of the word good, and then he used the Ten Commandments to bring the knowledge of sin. So I got it off Jesus. But what most people don't realize is that biblical evangelism is law to the proud and grace to the humble. When you see proud, arrogant, self-righteous people in Scripture, they're always given the law to humble them and bring the knowledge of sin, such as the rich young ruler. But when you see humble Jews, such as the devout Jews on the day of Pentecost, or Nicodemus come to Jesus. They were humble of heart. They were already there. They were Jews that knew the law and were humble of heart, so they were given grace. So law to the proud and grace to the humble. That's the principle of biblical evangelism. If you look for that in scripture, it'll change everything you believe about gospel proclamation. And one last point, this does work on everyone who is sane. Ray Comfort has many harebrained ideas. His latest is to take a team to Europe and preach the gospel in 13 countries in 13 days. Now, why would he want to do that? To prove that the biblical gospel has immediate relevance in any country, in any culture. Ray's always maintained that while a missionary does need to be culturally sensitive, there's no need to spend years living in a foreign country to master all of the cultural nuances to earn the right to present the gospel. And this is because every sane human being in every culture has a God-given will to live and a God-given conscience. 
So contrary to what many people believe, Ray thinks that with God's help, all we need to do is to tap both into the will to live and the human conscience in order to make the gospel immediately relevant to anyone who hears it. Real quick, here are three things to help you grow in your faith. The Living Waters Podcast, the Evidence Study Bible, 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith, and much more. The Starter Kit, four of our most popular gospel tracks, available at livingwaters.com.